The natural logarithmic function log x gives the log to base e of x, where e is approximately 2 point mumble. Earlier, you were told that the derivative of e to the x was e to the x because the derivative of log was 1 over x. Or maybe you were told that the derivative of log was 1 over x because the derivative of e to the x was e to the x. But finding either of these derivatives from the definition of the derivative is impossible. And why is 2.7 mumble a natural base? We'll answer these questions using a technique drawn from the history of mathematics. Around 1658, Pierre de Fermat described a method of finding the areas under all curves of the form y equals x to the n, where n was any positive or negative rational number, except for n equals negative 1. We can still apply Fermat's method to find the area under the curve. Let L of t be the area bounded by the graph of y equals 1 over x and the x-axis over some interval. We'll choose some n and let r be the nth root of a, then partition the interval using the geometric sequence 1, r, r squared, r cubed, and so on up to r to the n, which will be equal to a, and then form our upper or lower or left or right rectangle. We'll start with the lower rectangles. The first rectangle has width r minus 1 and height 1 over r, so its area is The second rectangle has width r squared minus r, which is r times r minus 1, and height 1 over r squared, giving area The third rectangle has width r cubed minus r squared, which will factor as r squared r minus 1, and height 1 over r cubed, so its area will be and there's n of these rectangles, so the total area of all the rectangles will be and since r is the nth root of a, we can rewrite this without having to rely on r. Assuming the limit exists and equals the area, this gives us the following result. For a greater than or equal to 1, L of a is strictly greater than, for all whole numbers n, with L of a the limit of the expression as n goes to infinity. All we need to do is find the limit as n goes to infinity. Unfortunately, none of our usual methods allow us to find the limit. Now, not knowing the answer would probably stop a normal person, but mathematicians are not normal people, and so a useful idea to keep in mind for math and life is continue even if you don't know the answer. In this case, we're actually interested in the properties of L of t, so for now, we don't need to know what the limit actually is. Now, consider any b greater than 0, and consider the area over the interval from b to b times a. Again, we'll let r be the nth root of a, and partition our interval at the points b, br, br squared, and so on up to b, r to the n, which, again, because r is the nth root of a, that's just b a, and we'll form our rectangles. So the first rectangle has height 1 over br, and with br minus b, that's b times r minus 1, so its area will be the second rectangle has height 1 over br squared, and with br squared minus br, that's br times r minus 1, so its area will be The third rectangle has height 1 over br cubed, and with br cubed minus br squared, that's br squared times r minus 1, so its area will be... 
And so the total area of all the rectangles will be... And again, we can rewrite that using r as the nth root of a. But this is just L of a again, giving us the result for b greater than 0, the area under y equals 1 over x over the interval from b to ba is just L of a. Now consider L of a, b. This is the area under y equals 1 over x over the interval from 1 to a, b. But this area is the same as the area over the interval from 1 to b, well that's just L of b, plus the area over the interval from b to b, a, but this is the same as L of a. And so L of a, b is L of a plus L of of B. And so L of T is a function that has the property that L of the product AB is the sum of L of A plus L of B for all A and B greater than 1. But this is the property that logarithmic functions have. And remember, things that do the same thing are the same thing. Since this area function has the same properties that the logarithmic function has, L of t is a logarithmic function with some base. Now note, all the preceding holds for the area of any curve of the form y equals k over x, where k is greater than 0. But y equals 1 over x is the simplest such curve, so we'll identify the area function for this curve as a natural logarithmic function, where L of t is log t, and our integral from 1 to a of 1 over t dt is log of a. Now, we designate the base of the natural log using e, but what's the value of e? Since e is the base of our log function, we note that log of e is equal to 1, and so that gives us a way to find e as follows. From our area function being the limit, we want the area to be 1 for some value e. Now, for all n, the total area of all the rectangles will always be less than the actual area, so we have our inequality. And we could do a little bit of algebra. And this gives us an upper bound for e. As for a lower bound, suppose we use the upper rectangles to find our area. Then the first rectangle would have height 1 and width r minus 1 for area. The second rectangle would have height 1 over r and width r squared minus r for area. The third rectangle would height 1 over r squared and width r cubed minus r squared for area, and so on. So the upper sum would be, and this would always be greater than 1. So again, doing a little bit of algebra, we can find a lower bound for E. And so E is between two expressions, and we'll apply the squeeze theorem backwards. Ordinarily, we'd use the squeeze theorem to find a limit, but we know the limits exist, and they're both equal to e, and so we can define e as the limit as n goes to infinity of... And while we could do this, because e is either limit, we usually define e to be this limit. 